Hey, motivation and inspiration, similar kind of words, but very different. I have an inbuilt motivation to take photographs and print them. Like, it's just a lot of fun and I like to do it. Now, inspiration, sometimes I run out of inspiration and I, even though I would like to take photographs, I have no clue what kind of photographs and it doesn't feel like I'm excited. And then, then I need to work a little bit harder to get the inspiration. Uh, like in life in general, I don't believe in talent and I don't believe in luck. I believe in hard work. And the same with an inspiration, like I could wait for an inspiration to strike till the cows come home, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. So then I need to work a little bit harder. And it's just not necessarily a matter of luck or just a being inspirational person, but it's just finding the ways that work for you, like working hard to inspire yourself. I have a few very simple tricks that I, I thought I gonna show to you and explain some of my inspirational tricks that I used to get that little extra sparkle. It doesn't necessarily mean that the pictures are any better, but at least it's a nice process and I enjoy them taking the photographs when I'm in an inspirational mode. The first inspirational trick is to use my gear the way it was not intended to be used and get inspired by that misuse. I mean, I could of course go and buy new stuff and get inspired by new gear, but eventually that gets pretty expensive. So I much better try to find creative usage of what I already have. Uh, it's cheaper and it's often more fun. So. A few weeks ago, Kerry, one of my viewers, your viewers of this channel, gave me a few Craflex bags. These are the small Craflex bags, 6 by 9 centimeter bags. And I've been using these ever since, thank you so much. But I needed to do a little bit modification to these. Now the Craflex bag situation is just insane. They name them really confusingly. They, some of them look exactly the same, but when you try to put them into your Craflex, they don't fit. Like the same goes with the smaller Craflex, but also the bigger ones. Um, and what Kerry sent me when exactly suitable for my Series B RP Craflex. These are a little bit wrong type of, you know, sides and whatnot. Size is right, but the type is different, so I needed to do a little bit modifications. So, uh, first I took some tools and I created a little hole here with the saw and accidentally shot my thumb too, so this is a bloody mess. So I needed to get these sides sort of uh, side lines here and then the same kind of thing here and then here. And the ones that uh, Kerry sent me are the newer type and they don't have these little notches here but it's pretty easy to do. This is actually made of mahogany this film pack. It's surprisingly hard wood so it took me a while to carve them out and then I finalized them by filing, filing them a little bit more you know smooth. Then I needed to file a, a little notch away from here. So that was another thing I needed to do. And then they, you know, now fit into my Craflex bag. Like this. And so this is just like regular fixing and modifying them to be usable with my camera. So we are not yet in an inspirational misuse category with this. So the next thing I did was that I wanted to use these with uh, Instax film. Instax. Instax is a little small uh, Polaroid type of film 
used mostly by teenagers, or at least my daughters, they wanted to have a camera. I don't know if they ever shot any pictures, but this was a thing a few years ago they wanted to have. So I bought them a camera. And um, now I've shot a little bit of these Instaxes. I like the way they look. It's a color film or black and white film, ASA 800, so it's pretty fast. But it is notoriously difficult to expose. It's very narrow latitude with these things, so just beware. Anywho, I wanted to shoot them with my Instax pack, so for that reason, you know, the, the thing is that, let me show you. This Instax film goes nicely, it's just exactly right size, it goes nicely within the sheet film holder, but it's a little bit too long, so I needed to take a little bit wood out from this um, a little clip that keeps the film in place and for that I used you know one of the camera mechanics you know tool in addition to a, a saw and a file so now I can close this lid and now I have an Instax film bags for my Craftlex by the way if you want to try this remember that uh, the picture always goes upside down, so I put this inside of this bag upside down uh, so that then the picture is the right way up. So now we are getting to the inspirational part. I'm misusing my Craftlex. And I'm ready to take some Instax pictures with this year 45 Craftlex SLR. Pretty cool. I took these kind of pictures. This was just the beginning, so I didn't uh, really want to end here, now that I got my inspiration going on. So, next thing was that I removed the original lens from my Craftlex and took a lens from my Kiev 80. Now, in a real world, these have nothing to do with each other, there's nothing in common, but what I wanted to do is to do some free lensing. So when you take a Volna 3 lens from the Kiev and put it the wrong way around, it is surprisingly light tight. And then holding it with my right hand, I can still operate the camera with my left hand. And I took a few free lensing pictures like this. Now the distance between the film and the lens is a bit too long for this particular lens. So it means that I can only focus really close. So the only kind of pictures I can take with this combination are really macro pictures. And now this is getting really inspirational, so I took these kind of pictures. This is a good example of when you get into a flow, it just gets deeper and deeper and then you come up with new ideas and, and so of course it didn't end here. The next thing was that I took my Jupiter 11 lens. Jupiter 11 lens is a 135mm um, M42 mount lens, a Soviet made lens, really beautiful actually and, and not a bad lens. But it's not a medium format lens, it's for 35mm film, but I noticed that it draws a pretty wide angle, you know, pretty wide circle, so I thought I might be able to use it with my, my Craftlex, and I, it goes even nicer here, it actually goes a little bit inside of this if I hold it with my hand, so then I wanted to take a 
few pictures by freelancing with my Jupiter. And of course I wanted to add an extra complexity. So instead of just freelancing and taking one picture, I took multiple exposures on one single sheet of Instax film. And I took, um, I think, six exposures for this one. You know, the previous pictures were taken with Instax uh, color film and now I used Instax monochrome. That's the film that I bought for myself as a Christmas present back in the days. So now I find a right use for that. So when I'm freelancing and taking multiple exposures, uh, there's no way of getting the exposures right on top of each other. So you get a little bit like haziness, but it's different than in, you know, intentionally moving the lens because there are sharp pictures, but there are six of them on top of each other. And I really like the way they look like. So I got this kind of a picture. Yeah, what an unnecessarily complex way to take a picture of a mason jar. You know, if somebody had told me that uh, go and take a picture of a mason jar, I would have said like, no way, that's not inspirational enough. But when I did all this misuse of gear, you know, kind of like creative use of gear, I suddenly have sheets of Instax film that <laughs> I kind of like. So that's one way to create inspiration for yourself. The other one is to just set yourself up to a small project. And it can be a silly project, but give it some boundaries. Like, don't make it uh, to last forever and don't make it too complicated. Just set up a small, simple task, like an artificial task. Create yourself a presser from outside to get your inspirational um, juices flowing. What I did was that there is this uh, lake close to where we live. I actually keep my boat there during the summertime. Now the lake is all frozen. There are a few sauna boats at the lake. Now sauna boat is like a houseboat but it's a little bit smaller and there is just a sauna on it. It's actually a pretty cool way to spend a summer day on a lake. You can go to a sauna swimming and you are in the middle of the lake. But now they are all frozen and I often take my dog over there and I've taken some pictures of those sauna boats uh, kind of stuck into ice lake but I never really got anything interesting out of that view. It should be theoretically a nice place to photograph, but it's been challenging for me. I don't know why. So now I set myself a project. I put a roll film back into my Craftlex, uh, put some uh, Ilford FP4 Plus film into this, and then I have eight pictures on my, on my, my camera. And here's my project. I take my dog for a walk and I take eight pictures of those sauna boats and that landscape. And that's my project. And regardless of the conditions on the lake, if the lightning is good or bad or if my dog misbehaves or whatever, I just try to make the best out of it. That's my project. Should eight pictures try to make the best out of it? And as I have already failed in that place a couple of times, now I wanted to see if I can create something that is interesting. I, can I shoot a few interesting pictures? I took my camera, my dog, and I headed down to the lake and this is what happened.
Hey, so as you can see, inspiration doesn't mean better pictures. These weren't particularly good pictures. So to get inspired is not an automatic tool, but to take more pictures and keep on shooting, that eventually leads to better pictures. So inspiration, at least to me, is only a tool for harder work, and it's the hard work that hopefully, eventually, creates meaningful pictures. That's my theory in life in general.